For the past six months or so, I've been at home using the Oculus Quest 2. This is Facebook's self-contained VR headset that's $300, doesn't need anything else, and allows me to work out, explore worlds, and do a lot of other things. It's basically a portable game console. But when I look back at when I first used Oculus five years ago, in 2016, it was a completely different product. Let's take a look back and see what the first Oculus Rift was like and how it changed to turn into what it is now. Hi, I'm Scott Stein at CES 2013, and we're taking a look at a dream that we've had for years, virtual reality. It's here at the Venetian Hotel, Oculus Rift. The Oculus Rift wasn't the first time that I was into VR. I liked the idea of VR decades before. In the 90s, I was reading cyberpunk books and Mondo 2000, and I tried VR in arcades, and I was looking forward to the Sega VR headset that was supposed to come out. So I've been thinking about the possibilities, and then when I heard that there was going to be this VR headset that possibly could bring this to life again, I was really excited to see it. In 2013, I was going to this hotel room in Las Vegas where there was a chair and a TV or monitor and I put on the headset, I just sat down and I tried the experience, which was just looking around at this medieval town that I was moving through. It's pretty basic. And right now you would think, well, so what? But the fact that I put it on and it made me feel like I was looking around and it was really tracking my head motion was astounding. And there were other colleagues that were looking at it too that were also blown away. But we didn't know when that would be coming out. Then we got these demos every year at CES, like something to look forward to. 2015 was the time at CES that I got a chance to actually move around in VR with the Rift. That's when they added some motion tracking with camera sensors. And there, there were these demos where I saw this dinosaur and I was able to duck down. There was this table in this Alice in Wonderland type room where I could lean in and look at things. And it felt like some crazy holodeck dream. Now, later that year, at E3, Flying. Oculus did another demo. Alien creatures, it looks like, were a, a huge... And that's where I got this demonstration with Palmer Lucky in the other room, where I got to try out Oculus Touch. We're standing across from each other. This is so crazy. These controllers that really defined what VR controllers were going to be in the future. They're kind of like a split-apart gamepad with analog sticks and buttons, and they didn't just track your hand motion, they also tracked your finger movement. And so in this demo, I was in this place where I could play around with toys and shoot arrows and I could remote control little toy helicopters. And that's when I thought, okay, this is completely the future. HTC Vive is a competing product that I got to demo in Barcelona in 2015 in the spring, and I got to step into this complete holodeck experience uh, in an entire room where I could walk around. And that was even more immersive in some ways than what Oculus was doing. That came out uh, and I thought, okay, what else is gonna happen? PlayStation VR, Sony's product, was being shown at the same time, where you could ride a bike in VR and you could you know, play all sorts of games where you were diving into these weird worlds. There were mobile headsets too. Samsung Gear VR and Google's Daydream and Google Cardboard were ideas of, of taking your phone and putting in a pair of goggles and then suddenly you could look around and see VR. Samsung Gear VR was a project that Oculus developed to try to figure out a way to explore mobile and get displays and shrink it down to something that PC VR couldn't do. And eventually those two fused down the road. The most real world I've had in the last hour. Yeah, I'm, looking at, le I'm looking at leaves on trees. I'm exercising different <laughs> focal parts of my eyes. The Oculus Rift finally came out in March 2016. And we got a chance to do one final demo of this before the hardware came out. Sean Hollister and I spent uh, an endless number of hours in this space in San Francisco playing as many VR games as we could some of them using an Xbox controller and some of them using the touch controllers that were also going to come out. And we realized the limits of VR fatigue. Also getting the VR marks on your face. But 
I have happy memories of it. I feel like it was overwhelming. I felt like I didn't know how long I could play in VR, but I felt like I wanted to do it more. So when the Oculus Rift finally came out and we could use one, we were very excited, almost too excited. Virtual reality has arrived and in it, you feel like you're somewhere else. And for a sense of some VR poetry from back then, let's listen to some lines from my original review. My eyes aren't here anymore. I see wings and a beak. My hands are in front of me. Crab claws, their guns, their clown gloves, their dog paws. Am I moving or dreaming I'm moving? I reach into my mouth. I pull out a flower. Hi, Mom. It's me. A small flick of my fingers. A blink of my eyes. And I'm gone. What you got with the Oculus Rift in March 2016 was a lot different than what you're getting now. You only had one camera sensor stand, which you needed, by the way, to track motion. This headset, which kind of looks like other VR headsets now, and an Xbox controller. An Xbox controller, because there were no Oculus Touch controllers yet. So you needed to sit down, play games on that controller, and maybe move your head around a little bit, but not too far because the tracking was pretty limited. When the touch controllers came out later that year, which had the buttons and the way to you know, track your hands, you still needed a second camera sensor that it came with, which you had to put in special places in your room so that you had this little zone of tracking. There was no tracking yet inside the headset itself. Now we have cameras built into headsets that can look at the room and not need those sensors. But it really meant that you had to set up your own little holodeck space, your own little zone that was your VR play area with your cables coming out of the headset into the PC. And you had to have a pretty serious gaming PC to do this with particular graphics cards and particular ports, USB 3, HDMI, maybe multiple USB 3 ports. That wasn't a given back then. So, the cost of that whole package was also pretty considerable. The Oculus Rift was $600 when it came out, and that was just for the one with the Xbox controller. The touch controllers were an extra $200, so that's $800 for that whole package, plus the gaming PC, was the reason why we said at the time that it, there were some really cool experiences on it, but you really are paying a lot of money for this kit. Now for a while, Advanced VR was still stuff that you had to plug into a PC or a game console. At the same time, you had those phone mobile VR headsets, and they started to fuse. Facebook released the Oculus Go in 2018, which was basically like a self-contained version of the stuff that you'd put your Samsung phone or Android phone into. It only allowed you to move your head around, and that was pretty much it. Now Google actually had a more expansive and experimental device called the Lenovo Mirage Solo that no one remembers, but was really like the Oculus Quest. You could move around a little bit and have this tracking that you could move in space. But Google never really did very much with that device, and it didn't have its own controllers. It just has one single remote. The Oculus Quest came out in 2019. That was the point where I felt like the world had fused. The Oculus Quest was mobile phone based, mobile chip based, but it added that full motion tracking and those controllers. And even though the graphics weren't as good as a PC, the whole experience was so cool and so immersive and so fine tuned that it felt basically as good as the stuff that you were able to try back in 2016. The Oculus Quest remained this, this standalone uh, symbol of where VR was heading and is heading that nobody else has matched. The Oculus Quest 2 came out in 2020 and increased the graphics power even further. First live demo in VR. <laughs> and of course, one thing that's really changed over the course of the last five years is that Oculus had been this startup company that was acquired by Facebook. Those Oculus executives, a lot of them are gone now. And Facebook has internalized a lot of those VR efforts and Facebookified a lot of the platform. You need a Facebook login to use Oculus now. And Facebook's plans are to integrate a lot of its other services. That's the stuff that people who used VR back in the past didn't want or were worried about. Where is Facebook going with that next? And will Facebook evolve the idea of social media to go alongside that? We don't know yet. But where are we going from here? 
Well, I feel like if I took that Oculus Quest 2 and showed it to my 2016 self and said, take a look at this VR, I would have been completely blown away. Because all of that dream versus reality stuff that I was talking about back then became real in that self-contained headset. But now we're talking about a whole new frontier. Mixed reality and AR, the possibility of projecting virtual things into the real world. We got tastes of that in 2018 with Magic Leap and in back oh, as far as 2015 with Microsoft HoloLens. Now we're seeing a lot more devices trying to explore that idea. And Facebook is looking to blend its VR headsets into full wear all the time AR glasses that will even have these neural inputs on your hands. That's a pretty crazy step that could take five, 10 years, and there could be a lot of other companies exploring that too. VR during that time, maybe shrinking down into things that look a lot more like everyday glasses, or at least be a lot more portable. You could, you know, tuck away and pull out and dive into, maybe like headphones for your eyes. So now in 2021, I'm still excited about VR. And that's because for a lot of people I know, it's still their first experience in it. I feel like there are a lot of friends who are getting their first VR headset and are asking me to play, uh, relatives who I join in with, artists who are exploring it. And that stuff makes me realize that for all that I've been following it, it's still starting all over again. After a whole year that we've spent living virtually, it's redefining the idea of virtual. And I'm really excited over the next 10 years to see how people wrangle that and where it goes next. Thanks for watching. Tentacled beast that is much, much larger than me running over my head. Someone's whispering. What are those things around me?